music heard in hi-fi. The soundtrack of Maybe Someday was first heard in a small house on Vendom Avenue. It was eventually heard in homes on Council, Reno, Dillon, and Union. The music of this hit Broadway musical was heard in cars driving north on Rampart, turning right on Temple Street, then stopping at a parking lot in Baha'i Kubo, a popular LA restaurant in historic Filipino town, Hi-Fi for short. At Baha'i Kubo, the music of Maybe Someday was heard on the loudspeakers, a bootlegged video of the musical played on a large TV in the restaurant. Bootlegged, yes, bootlegged. <laughs> Filipino men and women sang along, including the old Manongs and Manangs, who sang in cracked, weathered voices. Middle-aged women who lost their virginities decades before sang the tunes of the musical about an innocent girl stuck in a horrible, senseless war. Mm. They knew the songs because the story was told and told and told again. Some years ago, Jethro and Goldstein, the producers of this musical about the Vietnam War, went on a worldwide search for a cast, especially the leading lady. Auditions were held on three continents the lead and a good number of the supporting cast and chorus were found in the Philippines. Bless Velasco was in Manila when auditions happened the first time around. She was 11 when the producers arrived, too young to audition. She stood on street corners singing then. Her parents collected money from tourists visiting Manila Bay. A half hour of singing would garner enough food to buy her family food for that night. The musical went on to become a big hit in London and New York. They needed more girls to play the lead. They went to the Philippines again. She was 14, still too young. She strengthened, strengthened her voice by singing in school productions and singing in front of malls. The producers came again when she was 18, but by then, Bless wasn't in the Philippines. She was singing and dancing in Japan. By the time she was 23, she had moved to Los Angeles, renting a room from a cousin of a cousin. She read in Filipino newspapers that the musical was coming to Los Angeles to audition for a cast that would tour North America. Bless knew this was her chance. Living in the States had always been a dream. Oh, to be an American girl. The price to visit the States was steep, more money than she would ever save working in the Philippines. She knew other seniors who traveled to Asia making a living with Japan as the big jackpot. When she read that audition for the musical was happening in her adopted city, she believed dreams do come true in America. <laughs> Bless stood in line waiting to be seen. She had been standing on Grand Street for half an hour. She looked at the men and women in front of her, some of whom looked like people she had known in the Philippines. She wanted to talk to them, speak to them in Tagalog. When she was in Japan, she liked talking to the other Filipino performers in Tagalog. It relaxed her, made her feel less lonely. She was about to talk to other girls in line, ask them where they were from, Manila, Cebu, she overheard their conversation. Their English was distinctly American. And Bless decided against talking to them. She knew they would ask her where she was from or inquire how long she'd been in America. She didn't want to deal with those kinds of questions. <laughs> she finally entered the casting office. Bless chose to sing one of the songs from the original musical, the big song that closes act one. It spoke of wonder and despair, the future and the past converging. She knew, she knew it by heart because that was a song that she sang nightly in that bar in Tokyo. The pianist began to play her music and she sang. All of them looked up, then leaned forward. She knew they would do this, suddenly become interested 
In all of the bars where she'd sang, she'd had to deal with distracted audience from drunks to fighting couples. She learned to work her work for their attention, singing with emotion, using dramatic gestures, sustaining a long, sad note. She had learned how to take focus. This audition was no different. She was asked back to meet with producers. At her callback, she, they asked her to sing again. Then they took her through the opening number where she introduced, she was introduced as a sweet village girl trying to make it in the big city. She nailed it. I'd been rehearsing that song since I was 11, she thought. How long have you been singing? Since I was a little girl. Yes, it, it, it shows. It, it's a little rough. Your resume says you sang in Japan for several years. Tell us about that. It was the first time in this audition she felt queasy. I sang in different nightclubs. She couldn't tell them that they were hostess bars. She wore tight dresses and was paid to drink with businessmen after work. She made good money because there was a karaoke machine in the bar and she'd sing some choice love songs that made, more val that made her more valuable than the other girls who simply sat there and looked pretty. Mm. Let's have you sing some songs in the second act. By this time in the musical, uh, our heroine is asked to do some unsavory acts like engage in prostitution. I know it's difficult, but imagine having to do that when you sing this song. Um, I'll try, she said. Mm -hmm. No problem, she thought. In this part of the show, you have to say goodbye to your son. Take it slowly. Imagine having to let go of someone you love. Thus heard the few bars of the song, sounds coming from the piano. She closed her eyes and felt the music. She didn't have a son to say farewell to, but she had other people. She thought of her parents and sisters, her little brother Manny, who was going to be the first in her family to attend college. She thought of her cousins, Dom, Alberto, and Susan, who had always believed in her talent as a singer. She remembered her dear childhood, Ressa, who, had, who, she had, re, who had recently gotten married. When she left, she told them that she looked forward to seeing them again, something she thought would happen. She didn't intend on becoming Tago Nantago, TNT for short, or simply undocumented. She sang all of her farewells into that song. When she was done, there was silence. She looked up and the men were looking at her. She thought she had done something wrong. Until then, they started applauding. Bless, honey. Can you wait outside? We have one more girl to see. Bless sat in the waiting room. She, not, she knew she had done a good job. The door opened and a pretty girl popped her head in. She had long wavy head, long wavy hair and a great big smile. Is this the place? The girl said, I'm here to audition. Uh, Bless nodded. Oh good, she said. I got lost in the freeway then and got lost with the parking. I'm Veronica. Before Bliss could introduce herself, Veronica pulled out a portfolio with three different shots of her. Hi, I'm Veronica. Yes, I, I know you. You told me already. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just nervous. Always get nervous. Lord knows how many auditions I've gone on. I still get nervous. How long have you been doing this? Oh, since 13 or so. Yeah, uh, high school of the performing arts, then Juilliard. But they never tell you how to get rid of nerves. I can't believe I'm auditioning for this show again. I did the Canadian tour, but I was the understudy. I just finished the, the musical of The King and I. I understudied top 10. Before that, I did Flower Drum. I understudied Linda Lowe. Always the understudy, never the bride. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> I've done uh, shows in Asia. I moved to the States a year ago. My name is Bless. Bless. What a cute name. Only Filipinos would name their child that. <laughs> How long have you been waiting? 
Oh, I, I sang already, but they, they asked me to stay. Oh, they must like you. My auditions haven't been so great. I haven't booked anything in months. I've, I'm here for pilot season. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. You want to be a pilot? <laughs> oh, aren't you precious? No, I'm auditioning for television pilots. It's that time of year. I live in New York, but live in LA February, March, hoping to land a series. The door opened and the casting director came out. Veronica, Stewart, how are you? They knew each other. Veronica entered. Bless took note of the round of hellos she got from the producers. They obviously knew her. Bless heard the music begin. Through the door, she could hear Veronica sing. Oh, such a gorgeous voice. Bless knew it was an expensive voice. One that came from years of instruction and classes. Veronica was in there for a long time. She, like Bless, sang song after song from the show. Finally, Veronica emerged. She picked up her things and said, Good luck, Caress. I have another audition. Gotta run. <laughs> the door opened, and Stuart asked Bless into the room. She stood on stage, looked at the man. Stuart smiled. We'd be honored to have you sing the lead in our musical. Congratulations! Bless stuffed her last blouse into her luggage. It would be a long plane ride. So she then went and ate at her favorite meal in LA. A big chili burger from Tommy's Hamburgers on Beverly Boulevard. <laughs> she would miss this. <laughs> She took a long walk around her neighborhood and would remember the names of its beautiful streets, Beverly, Coronado, Dillon, Vendum. She pulled out the producer's letter from her po back pocket. She read it again. She read it a million times. She'd keep it with her, perhaps even frame it to show anyone who didn't believe her that she'd actually been cast in the musical. How many girls can say that? She would always love this city this America. She could honestly say that she had lived in the state something anyone from the Philippines would have given an arm for. She believed in opportunities and liked to think that she had taken them as best as they came, like the chance to come to America. She obtained a tourist visa and planned to stay for a month, using the money she had earned entertaining in Japan, but she loved this city and decided not to return. She lived in Los Angeles for 18 months before auditioning for the musical. And it took less than two weeks to get the letter from the producers. She memorized its contest, contents. Dear Miss Velasco, we were thrilled to have you star in our musical. Your voice has a quality that we'd always associated with the lead role. Innocent, strong, hopeful. We've seen many girls audition for this part, and we believe that your voice was one of the strongest we've heard. However, the Actors' Equity had informed us of your lack of documentation. If we had power over labor issues, we'd keep you right now. The state of immigration today is, is very touchy, and it wouldn't be wise to maintain you in our show. I suggest you go back to the Philippines, obtain the proper visas, and try again. Sincerely, Stuart Modeski. Try again. Bless knew these words well, wondered if trying would be worth her time anymore. She would return to the Philippines. She didn't think she'd return to the States. She had known that getting going against the stipulations of her tourist visa was a big gamble. She'd heard stories that those who did that never got the leniency to return to America again. They might audition in the Philippines, but she didn't know if she would audition. She had gotten the part already. She beat out a girl who'd sung the role and been trained by the best in America and was auditioning for pilots. She folded the letter, returned to the house, 
She gathered her luggage, decided to wait for the taxi out front. She began to hum. It was a melody she'd never heard before, a song she improvised in her head. It was an upbeat number, one that led her to smile. Thank you so much. Thank you.